Hi everyone. I am going to take a second to get this link so I can share it because unfortunately we've had a tech tech disaster this morning. Let me see if I can share this. Well, I might not be able to share it. Hey guys, thank you so much for finding the new stream. Always is an experiment. I am going to try to get a good angle because we're on a laptop. So it's not going to be as nice as the phone, I feel like. But at least we have this option. Hey, Zena. Okay, guys. So I'm going to have to move some stuff around. That light won't stay. Let's see. That won't work. Sorry, guys. It, it just got this to work. So I am very behind on prepping. That might work. So let me find something that will hold this up. What about this? You think that will work? Hey guys, one sec, a little bit of difficulty. Got my mom here helping me a little bit. I think that should be good. Hi guys. All right, this should, it's kind of an awkward angle, but hopefully you guys, I can move the um, laptop around when you need to see stuff in particular. Wes went back to work today, so he's not here to help or to um, mediate. So if we get some spammers in here, I'm sorry for their language in advance. Hey Gail, um, because I probably won't be able to I don't even know how he put them on timeout last time. So, okay, let me get my own laptop so I can. Does anyone have a new iPhone? Um, I don't know what it is, like an 11 or something that doesn't allow you to talk. No one can hear you on the other end because I've been troubleshooting all morning and this my speaker is completely out. I'm so happy to see everyone. Just reading your comments. Okay, we are doing Swiss Method from Sugar Bean. Um, her recipe, her technique, I was all prepared and I put the, the recipe in the description of the last stream so i'm sorry i will after this video update that and put the recipe in the actual description of the video oh you guys are awesome yeah 11 max pro maybe that was it i my speaker is not working i need to call apple from bulgaria hello thank you for watching okay i can look on this but i need to find the actual video New stream, new stream, head over. So let me see where this, this one is. I'm gonna share it. Okay. So now hopefully people can find where we are. I know I need to get in touch with Apple. I'm so frustrated this morning. It has been a Monday for sure. Things I wanted to specify before we started this. Hi, Don. Glad you came over and made it. Hey, Nikki. Things to specify, specify before we start is this is uh, sugar beans recipe. We're and method. We're totally going rogue here and trying a new method. This is my second time in all trying Swiss method and it will be my 
first time trying her recipe. Hello from Arizona. She is a bakery. So we have to put into thought, like the hard thought process that she has a commercial grade oven. It looks like it's electric and convection. She can use multiple trays in her oven at once. So these are things to think about when we are going through the actual cooking process, baking process. I'm gonna attempt her method of drying the macarons in the oven first. This will produce two sheet trays, the recipe. So we will attempt drying the macarons in the oven like she does. And then the other tray I'll just leave out to dry regular and then we'll put those in after the other one is done just to see. I feel like with a gas oven, the amount of humidity it puts off might cause cracking. So we'll see if that's true, if we get cracked macarons for um, that process of drying in the oven with a gas oven, but I have no idea, so we'll see. Okay, let's see here. I did, um, Zoe asked if I had luck with the first method. It was on a live as well. I used Broma Bakery's recipe and it was a little bit hollow to be honest but they turned out pretty on the outside. So I'm excited for this too. So what we need that's a little bit different from the French method, I'm so behind in getting everything prepped. We need our thermometer. So if you have um, a point and shoot thermometer or like a candy thermometer or one of these thermometer, we're taking the sugar syrup or not sugar syrup, but the egg whites and the sugar to 50 Celsius. And we are going to um, also use a stand mixer today. So I don't know if whoever's baking with us, you might have prepped half. I recommended half uh, a batch for those who would prefer in their experiments not to waste as much. I'm going full force and we might mess up a whole two dozen macarons today, but. It's for the fun of it because I wanted to use my stand mixer because I haven't done it for since I moved. So let me go get my stand mixer and we're gonna start. Do you use egg whites from carton? I am not using egg whites from a carton. I only use egg whites from a carton when I have large production and I do a ratio from fresh and car um, fresh, more fresh than carton egg whites. Let me get that mixer. Sorry, I'm a little flustered today. I'm also sad. Wesley's gone. I enjoy having a, him to help with the um, technical stuff. Um, but this is making me happy. I'm happy to have something to do today and see you. Well, not see you guys, but interact with y'all. Okay. Mac Dream Macaron Inks. I like that name. Okay, my friends. So I put the recipe up for prepping. We've got 150, 150 grams of sugar, 160 grams of egg whites. We're not using any dried egg whites. This is her uh, sugar beans recipe. I also have, I think it was 190 almond flour and 170 confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. I think she even calls it, she calls it even something else. I don't know, but same thing, confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, or <laughs> maybe like powder. Uh, no, that wouldn't make sense. Soft sugar. I don't know. It was something I had never seen before. Okay. Clean. I got to clean my bowl and then we're going to put the 160 grams of egg whites. And the thing that's different with Swiss method is we're going to put it on a double boiler. You're going to have your water boiling slightly, then turn it down to a simmer. You do not want to put too much water in here because then it will make contact with your bowl and then you'll scramble your egg whites. And we do not want to scramble our egg whites. We want a light heat coming up. I hate these bottoms for this reason. Um, a double boiler is very difficult, but um, I, if you have a regular um, clean bottom, it's, it sounds funny, a, a nice rounded bottom, 
even funnier, um, then you are going to be able to not worry so much about it hitting your egg whites. I just worry that it's gonna burn, I'm burn them or cook them, I guess. So you just have to be careful with these guys and make sure you have a little bit of water in there and just the steam is what's heating everything up. We're taking it to 50 Celsius and then I'll keep talking as we go so we can get started. And because we are doing a larger batch today, I am going to be using my big mat with my big silicone mats. And then also I get to use my French steel pan that I really liked. <coughs> so I'm gonna use this for the second batch and use a little Teflon sheet like um, Sugar Bean does as well. So this will be more like hers. Although she tends to pipe not on the sheet tray and like just flaps it instead of tapping a tray. So it's very interesting. I love seeing everyone's different methods. They turn out beautifully on her channel. I'm excited too, Joy. Okay. Jade asked where they can find the recipe. It was in the old stream. It's 160 grams egg whites, 150 grams sugar, and then 190 grams almond flour, 170 grams confectioner sugar. All right, guys, we've got our clean bowl. I got a whiff of vinegar. I'm going to measure out, even though I haven't measured already, and just make sure. I like to triple check, especially when I'm flustered. So make sure your scale isn't touching anything. Um, mixing by hand will be a problem unless you are like have so much endurance and you can get a stiff peak of meringue on your own because you have to whip your egg whites to a nice stiff peak. Okay, so 150. No, 160, sorry. And the whole point of taking this to 50 Celsius is that we are kind of melting the sugar in there and making a super sturdy meringue this way. So we're at 160. We're not trying to pasteurize here. It's not really necessary because we're baking our macarons. I don't use a lipped baking sheet. Someone asked about a baking sheet uh, because the airflow in at least gas ovens tend to be pretty poor with macarons. It will cause cracking. So I like to, if I have a lipped baking sheet, I flip it over and I put my silk pat right on top or my silicone mat. Okay guys, so we're gonna just bring, like I said, the water to a boil, then turn it down to a simmer, and then we'll put our eggs on there. And we're gonna add our 150 grams of sucrose or sugar or granulated sugar. You can use caster sugar. Uh, it's finer, but it's also more expensive. And especially when you are heating it up, I don't See the need. So make sure when you pour this in, you're not getting it on the sides. She's super careful to like get it in the middle of your bowl. And then she even uses a little whisk to get it started. Just to make sure it gets all hydrated. So I don't think I can get an angle for you guys. I'm kind of messing up the sugar, but I'm just mixing it in. You can see I got the sugar all over the sides now, but what else? This is another, the, that little bottom on the, it's not a nice rounded bottom on these artisan um, things. So just everything gets like stuck on the little lips. I don't, I don't love this bowl. 150 grams sugar.
You can definitely use a hand mixer, but doing it all by hand might get really tiring, but hey, it'd be a good workout. Okay, so I kind of did vigorously and got a, so I got my sugar all whipped up so it's nice and, it's, it's just um, dissolved, not dissolved, but it's better. Now I will get a larger whisk and whisk this until we're at 50 Celsius. I am going to get my whisk attachment so I have that ready as well. And then we will start on four and mix until it's nice and fluffy. And then we can turn it up higher until we have a stiff peak. All right, so we're still getting to a boil. It's nice and steamy. Someone asked if you can reduce the amount of sugar. I have had people do so. Um, it tends to result in hollow shells. It will lower the strength if you take it out of your meringue. It'll lower your, the strength of your meringue and could cause you uh, wrinkled tops or just not um, cracks, I guess, in your shells. So I don't suggest ever reducing sugar in the shells. You could reduce powdered sugar and replace with more almond flour though, but I don't mess with the granulated sugar much. So we're at a simmer, a boil. I'm gonna turn it down. You just want that steam to continue to come up. We're gonna put this baby in. You can like double check that it's not touching the actual water. Thank you, Yo-Yo. What? Wow. That is very generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us. I feel like, so these people have been asking, thank you so much, how to support. And um, I'm not very good at the accepting things. So I have told some people that's fine or whatnot, but this is a great place that you can help support. Or I'm working on doing some classes like you guys. I'm listening to what you've requested. And so maybe some Zoom classes where I can actually see you um, will be really cool because then I can help more one with people even if it's through Zoom. So um, that's the first time letting that information out. So just wait and hopefully I'll be able to get in contact with the actual company I want to do booking and ticketing through. And then hopefully I can offer those classes to you guys. So I'm just whisking constantly because you don't want your egg whites to get too hot. Get your thermometer. Exclusive. Yeah, we got some exclusive information in this live today. We're only at 36 right now. So we're going to keep going. And like I said, keep whisking the entire time. I actually, I only watched her vid, uh, sugar beans video once. So I don't remember, recall her whisking, but I, I would assume she whisked the entire time. Yours isn't boiling. That's okay. Live in the dream. You can definitely, it'll come to a boil and then you'll just be a little behind. With how much I talk, I'm sure you'll catch up. Does the Swiss meringue buttercream taste very buttery? Yeah, it tends to because you usually use a European butter. It's less sweet than American butter. It's really what people are used to and what they prefer because I love Swiss meringue buttercream or an Italian meringue buttercream. But the first time I tasted it, I thought it was pure butter. So you have to get used to it. I feel like it's an acquired taste if you're used to American buttercream. So we're at 43 for me. I don't know where you guys are. Decorating macarons and packaging. Thank you. I'm always looking for these, I have a running list of what I need to do for videos in the future, and I just need to start. Hey, Bailey. Using, I have never heard of that kind of sugar. Is that a sugar substitute, Jade? I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. 
again, really thank you so much, Yo-Yo, Vaughn, Van or Vaughn. 43 Celsius, yeah. Alexa, what's 50 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 50 degrees Celsius is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you. Did that answer your question? It sure did. Okay. We are at 50 Celsius. So that was what, 122 she said? Hello from India. So Fahrenheit is, you're taking it to 122. So now we're just a white stringy substance that is not at all, doesn't have any volume or anything. It's just dissolved that sugar. And now we're gonna whisk it up. I'm gonna turn it straight to a four, in between a four and a six. All right. I've got my little artisan here. I'm gonna whisk that. Sugar bean also does this technique, which I also saw with Jaslyn from the Sugar Holic Girl. They put two different colors in the batter and then um, just mix it slightly and then put it all in one piping bag and it gets that marbled effect without splitting your batter, having to worry about when to split and using the piping bag. So I thought we'd try that. I've got Ash Color by AmeriColor and Periwinkle. So let's see. I thought those might be pretty. I know, I'm so nervous to macronage in the mix for you guys. Yes, yeah, so Michelle, I'm going to have my dry ingredients and just mix them in. Makes me very nervous, but we're gonna do it. Yes. It's considered... oh, okay, so Jade, I've never tried that, but you could try, but I have heard people don't have much luck with sugar substitutes. So we're getting volume right now. At the very end, I'm gonna put it in a wide bowl and then you can see better when I'm adding the coloring. So for my piping bag, I'm just gonna get a nine millimeter tip. <laughs> I'm so nervous, like my stomach hurts thinking about allowing the mixer to mix in the dries, but I'm excited to try it. That's what this is all about, right? Trying, experimenting. So I got my nine millimeter tip in here. Use a cup, like a wide mouth cup or something. Fold up the tip so it doesn't all pop out. Then you pour it in. And then it won't come out as you fill. I have one more piping bag in case I want to fill all of it at once. You can either do, use two piping bags or you can leave your batter in for a second if you're fairly quick at piping. Just leave your batter in your bowl and then refill that one so it's less to wash or less to throw away whatever kind of piping bag you're using. So we are at a nice fluffy, let me give you guys a better look, consistency. I'm gonna turn it up to a six or an eight, in between six and eight. 
see my music. Sorry, guys. It's in between. Well, can you see that? In between the six and an eight. Someone said they have hollows every time they try. Next time. Yes, next time, Jade. So, I've tried mixing in this. Let me just wait till this is not looking. Oh, Kevin, you're always such an encourager. Thank you. I don't know about this one. The whole drying in the oven really throws me off. Because I'm excited. The least buttery buttercream, I think, would be American. Uh, it's definitely sweet, though. If it's not buttery, it's going to be sweet. So it's whatever you prefer. So it's starting to be soft peaks. Hey, Sugarholic Girl, I thought Jaslyn's here. I was talking about how in one of her videos, she has a YouTube channel, you should check it out. She does the marbling in a really simple way and I loved it, it's genius. Hey, Lori. Someone asked about the drying method. I think it would be best with a convection oven. I think that would be the key. I'm using a gas uh, conventional, and I do not think it will work. But we shall see. We're getting, we're getting fluffy and almost stiff. I'm going to turn it up between an 8 and a 10 now. I really don't want to mix in the dryers in here. Hi, Alicia. Yeah, that's, that will definitely happen if you don't rest them long enough. There will be cracks. I'm not sure if someone asked if you could do the drying method with a different method of meringue. And I don't know. That's a great question. I'll have to try it sometime. Dora, you tried the drying method and if you had cracks. Yay, Ron, I'm excited you're going to try it. Okay, so once your meringue is clumping around your whisk, see that? It's kind of coming around it. You can see the striations. So let's stop it and see where we're at. And see, oh yeah. Stiff. Definitely good. I don't want to go much farther than that. So now we're going to put in our dries. I really, okay, I promised you guys I would. So this is already sifted and put together. I, last time I tried this, I put the paddle attachment on, but I'm trying to stay true to Sugar Bean's method and I'm going to keep the, the whisk. So I think she has it on low. I'm going to put the dries in. Oh, I think she turns it off, puts it in, and then mixes. Also, we'll smoke. I feel like she was good about stopping every once in a while and putting, taking the meringue off the whisk. So let's try that. I kind of messed it up by putting the dries in already. 
Okay, my friends, that will have to do. Okay. Let's put in some dries. I'm gonna do a third and mix. You got this, thanks, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna see how there's, um, I don't know if you can see, but there are dries all around the bowl um, over here. So I'm going to lift up, use the spatula to get everything incorporated and then go again. Like, I don't know if I have, because of editing of videos, I don't know how quick she works. This is fun to see. Let me get all that down. So I've got sweat. Okay. Let's go for some more. I'm so sweaty, you guys. I'm so nervous. I'm going to do the other third. And we're going to mix more. Do you sift once more? I didn't sift again, but I know that she just sifted her dries right over when she did a smaller batch and used her hand mixer. Okay. It's making me very nervous. So here we go. I'm going to add the last batch and then scrape down one more time. Yeah, I don't know if I said that loud enough, but I didn't sift again. But you can, more sifting never hurt nobody. I was trying to sing a song and that didn't work. Sorry, it doesn't hurt. Okay guys, so scraping the sides of our bowl. Trying not to macronage myself. Okay guys. And a whiskey. Again, I'm doing it on like a two. Okay. So let me scrape down again. I'll whisk one more time because I still see some dries. And then I'll pour it in a bowl so we can do the colors. Um, it's okay if you're behind. We're still doing it together. So I'm just gonna get on the bottom here a little bit because of that, that little divot on mine. Um, at the bottom of the bowl, if you guys have this model, you'll know what I mean. Things get stuck down there. So I'm just going to kind of get underneath because I see a lot of dries actually not, um, not incorporated. See all, can you see all that dry? I don't know with the lighting if you can, but I'm going to help it along. And actually, it's probably ready to just go into the bowl. I think she goes a little bit farther though. So let's go a tiny bit farther, just for her sake. Being true too. I don't wanna go farther because I'd rather finish it off with my arm, but let's see. Does anyone do this method? And they use um, the paddle. You ready? One more time. Okay, I think that's good. We've got it kind of streaming down now. I'm gonna put it into a wide bowl so you can see better. 
and then we'll do the two different color methods. We can see in the bowl that way. I'm seriously sweating so much. What do you guys, anyone else having a mild heart attack? Are they doing it? You don't have the guts to do it. Okay, I hear it speeds it up if you're going real fast. Okay, I'm gonna just get a feel for the batter and see where we're at. I mean, if it works, right, how nice. Looks like it's streaming like she likes it. So let's, let's stop there and then we'll do the little method. This is ash again, Americolor ash. It's not that different of a color. Just did three. And then periwinkle America again. Always shake them. I feel like it gets liquid. It separates in the bottle and you get liquid on top. <laughs> this is more stressful, right? I think so too. Okay, I'm putting two drops in each. She takes like a toothpick and just kind of Massages it in. So you're, I think the goal here is to not macronage anymore and just kind of mix it in without having to work the batter more. <sighs> Thanks, Jade. She said, deep breath. Doing great. We're all doing great. It's a little aggressive. Okay, so we've got the gray. I did the lighter color first, so I can, because it's still kind of the same color. Um, it's just a darker of almost the same shade, like of the same color. I don't know what I'm saying, but I use the darker, I did the lighter first, so I could use the same toothpick for the, anyways. Hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. I'm not really mixing it in as well as she does though. Jaslyn, have you done this before? I don't feel like I'm doing it right. Okay. So, it's not really exactly how hers looked in, in the video, but we're going to go with it and have like a marbled, fully marbled effect. Hers were like really in there but I don't want the batter to sit any longer. But I'm not stopping either, so I don't know what to do. Okay, here we go. There we go, that's the final batter look. Didn't exactly turn out how I thought. If you do wash your hands during your process of macro, Doing, making macarons, make sure you wipe really well and that you don't have drips and get your drips into your batter because it really does affect the batter. So here we go, going in. I'm gonna pipe on the small tray first and then um, I will try that, the drying with that one so I don't waste as much in case one of some of them will work. And then we can pipe on the big tray. So here's my French steel with a Teflon. It's like a little Teflon. It came with this blue drop one, which is really nice. I like the silicone mat and the Teflon from that group. These steel pans are smaller than my, my sheets so I have to make sure not to pipe where it goes up on the little corner 
there's a little bit of an edge that goes up at an angle and it will ruin your feet of your macarons. So make sure you give some space for that. And let's pipe. Let's see if you guys can, there we go. I have little hearts. Pretty combination of colors. All right, guys. I try to go slow, put pressure, I count. And then I stop pressing and then I do a little flick of the wrist, especially with um, multicolored macarons. I like to add the flick of the wrist to make the swirl more exaggerated. I definitely did less up here. Okay, so to be true to her, I'm going to just kind of flap it how she does. I'm always afraid when I do something like that, that I'm going to mess it up and it's not going to have the feet rise up nicely, but I'm trying hard not to tap it. And now I'm going to turn the oven on to 150 Celsius, which is 220. Alexa, what is 120 Celsius in Fahrenheit? 120 degrees Celsius is 248 degrees Fahrenheit. 248. Flop it on the countertop, Gail says. All right. But I don't want to move it. Okay. I will. To be more. Oh, that makes me nervous. Okay. You ready? Flopping it on the countertop. She said two something, 240, did you hear it? I'm gonna go with 240. Okay, I'm bringing it back on to my mat. I guess I don't need this one. Okay guys, the transfer. Okay, and then we're gonna dry it in the oven. 248, thanks guys, 248. So my oven isn't isn't that precise. So I'm doing 245. My Alexa asked you. <laughs> oh, I I just like sounded off everybody's Alexas. Okay, so I think may, I have to wait to preheat that, and then I can put it in and dry it. So let me pipe the other max. Mm -hmm. And we can get this, the rest of these. This is kind of hot, but I want you guys to be able to see. There we go. Sorry, everyone. I sounded off your Alexa. Oops, I said it again. All right. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, my friends. But my oven is on, so I'm a little nervous about the heat as I pipe over it. I'm gonna try to hurry. refill my bag and then we'll finish it up. Hopefully it will get all of this. 
Hopefully, I don't need another sheet tray. So, as we try out sugar beans ways of doing it, I do suggest you guys give her a subscribe, like her video, watch her video. I am not trying to copy. I am just trying to have fun with you guys and try out something new. Um, many of you guys asked specifically for this method and her way of doing it. So um, hopefully you guys are enjoying it and it doesn't seem like um, we're just copying her. We're just trying it out. Thank you, Don. Yeah, I've watched, I haven't watched all her videos yet, but it's pretty impressive. Definitely a workhorse. Is that the right term? Works, work fast? I don't know. Okay. I might have to get another sheet pan, but I really need to get these off my oven. Her macarons must be bigger than mine because the recipe says it yields 25, but I'm gonna need another sheet pan. Okay guys, I think my oven's almost to temp too, so we'll start drying those macarons out. Let me get this tray out of the way and we'll pipe the last tray. Oh my goodness, it's so hot up here with the oven on. Mistake. I'm gonna just tap it. Do. It's so pretty though. It kind of looks like the sky. I don't know. I really like it. it looks like the clouds. The sky. Okay, let me go put this over where it's not hot. All right, guys, our test batch, we're going to prop it open. She has a cute little oven mitts, but we'll just do a wooden spoon, I think. And let me see my notes. So I'm putting it in, got it open, wrote some notes the other night. It says two to three minutes. Alexa, set a two-minute timer. Two minutes, starting now. And then did anyone look, or does anyone know, if she keeps them in while the oven raises to temp, um, or if she takes them out, lets the oven preheat? Let me know, because I couldn't figure that one out. Thanks, Jaslyn. Off, off the even, off the oven. I'm not understanding. Let's see. She gets them. She lets them in. So she keeps them in, and then I just raise the temperature while they're in. Okay. All right. Oh. So it's not letting out a ton of. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. I think she leaves them in after drying. Okay. Sounds like a consensus. Let me show you guys here. I'm kind of, it's not holding them in well, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna like manually hold it open. I don't think it cracks open enough with just my wooden spoon. So they're in there, we'll see what happens. She turns off her oven and puts her macarons in then turns on the oven again. Okay, let's do it. I need to pipe my other Macs though, so this two minutes needs to go faster. Yeah, um, a convection oven definitely heats up faster, but we'll try it, you know? We're, this is the whole thing with new methods. You have to try for yourself how they say, I feel like, in their method, and then you adjust from there. 
Um, or if you know your oven already so well that you don't have to adjust from them, you just know what will work. But usually with different methods, it's kind of an experiment because Italian will be so, Alexa, stop, will um, behave so differently from French and vice versa. Okay, so I'm closing it. I'm turning the oven to 150 Celsius or 200, I mean 300, Sarah, 300 Fahrenheit. Um, and then we'll set, she only does 15 minutes. So Alexa, set a 15 minute timer. Sorry guys, I should minutes. just use a different Starting one so I don't now. set off your Alexis. Um, okay, let me pipe the rest of this batter. We might have to bake longer, but we'll see. And she probably flips the tray at some point too. Maybe in a half, maybe around five minutes, I'll flip the tray. Okay, let me get another sheet pan. I gotta get this bag out. So hopefully this sheet pan is clean enough. And I'm gonna pipe this last bit just to hand it because I think it's dying on me. So now it's at the 150 Celsius or 300 around Fahrenheit. Also, who knows what an oven shower is? At the end of her method, she does an oven shower. I'm assuming it's like the opposite of the preheat where she turns the oven off and just vents for a second, but I've never heard of an oven shower. Do you know she uses the tray upside down? Yeah. Okay. I feel like we all did our homework. Okay. Here we go. The rest of the batter. Tap this out and dry it like I usually do. Okay, I'm nervous to look in, but I want to peek. Do you guys want to peek for the first time with me? Oven shower is popular on Sugar Bean's channel. Yeah, so what is it? Let me, let me read. Upside down tray for airflow. Yes, yes, yes. After tapping the tray. Do, do you not pop? Someone asked if I don't pop the air bubbles, and I don't. I am lazy. I don't take that time. It was just a habit I got into when I was doing large production. But if I'm doing a decor on top of the macarons, like air, what is that, spray painting thing, airbrushing. I'm so anxious, you guys. The airbrushing, I will pop the bubbles and make sure the, the top is nice and smooth. Okay. Is to wait one to three minutes without removing the tray in the oven after baking. Thank you, Cheryl. So there is this term called an oven shower on her page, and she vents her term called an oven shower on her page, and she vents her oven, turns the oven off, right? But she doesn't take it out for three minutes or so. <laughs> Jade, I'm, I guess it's just not a priority for me. Is that a better way to say it? Um, popping air bubbles is not a priority for me. Okay. Fully cooked the macarons, but avoid browning. Okay. All right. I like this new lingo. 
it was such an interesting term. Can you use the same ingredient measurements for Swiss that you do French? Uh, no one has asked that yet, Laura, that I saw, and I would assume so. Um, maybe it might even just help strengthen your meringue and help the whole process, but I have not tried it. Okay, guys, let's let's see. What do you think? Are they gonna be cracked? Okay, let's make sure you guys have a good view. Ready? Oh my gosh, they're not cracking. Okay, I don't want the oven to stay open for too long. Holy smokes! I can't believe that. They looked very nice. They are not cracking. We shall see how the rest of this goes. Sandra, you're making it for the first time. My bat um, came out like paste. Are you using, Sandra, are you using this recipe as well? Yahoo! Uh, I feel like it's a thick, it's a nice thick batter, kind of like um, Mimi's base recipe. So that's five minutes. I'm going to flip the tray and then we'll see how we're doing. I got this cute oven mitt from my friend Gloria, a sweet Vita. Okay, I'm gonna just flip. All right, and then 10 more minutes. It said 15, that was only five. Um, okay, don't flip. Dang it, I already did it. Why not flip? I'm curious, is opening the oven, is that what um, the theory behind that? Elsa, Elsa said don't flip. Let me know what, what the theory behind not flipping is. Have you ever tried an ermine butter cream? No, but I want to. I see the flower girl, Lindsay, doing that all the time and I hear it tastes great, it's less sweet. I'm all for flour, so I feel like it would be delicious. Your Macs are turning out beautifully. Awesome. Oh, but they were hollow. Was it with this recipe? Do you have a schedule for these lives? So, Jade, I try to do lives every Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. So that is the goal. The previous week, I did it on Sunday because people were asking for a weekend live. So I switched it last week. But you can expect these every Monday. Sometimes my children are running around and sometimes they are corralled somewhere else and we can kind of focus. But either way, it's just fun for us to bake together or to try new things. Don't think she does. Okay. She doesn't flip them. Dang it, guys. I diverged from her method and now these are a fail. Laura asked if it has to be Swiss method to macronage with the mixer. No, I've tried it before with um, my French method for my the French recipe, and it worked as well. But they were, I forget what happened. I tried it once, and I think I was just sweating so much that I don't remember anything else. I didn't like it is what I remember. How do you usually dry? Um, I, someone, Anna asked how I dry with my method. I just leave them out like my other macarons are doing while these are baking. For the Swiss, no cornstarch, correct. There's no, there's nothing in here except for egg whites, uh, granulated sugar, confectioner sugar, and almond flour. If not by sugar bin method. I would, yeah, so Cheryl, I don't either. I'd be afraid to put multiple um, sheets. I haven't tried that at all with this oven since I moved, so I need to try that. Um, but I would be nervous too. But she does have a beautiful oven. 
that she can bake multiple trays. I've seen a lot of trays at once in her oven. I mean, she is a commercial bakery, right? So we have to realize that and kind of tailor to our home environment. You dry, and so um, T. Morrison said that they dry on the top of their stove so the heat doesn't make it so they they break open. Um, I'm trying to think. It doesn't make them crack is what I'm trying to say. I wasn't mean. <laughs> Splashdown of NASA. Oh, I didn't see that yesterday. No, you did not miss anything. Yes, you're right, Yolanda. What a great point. Whatever, whenever we do fail, we learn more, I feel like, than possibly being lucky with our first try at this go. So I am I have my other trays just sitting out on my dining room table. And I still wasn't able to form a skin on them. Um, if you can't form a skin on your macarons, um, it could be too hot. You could try multiple things, but investing in a dehumidifier and running it a few hours before you make max and while you make max could help you. Um, if you trust in your recipe and you know that the measurements are okay, it's not too moist, I would definitely go the route of Closing all windows if it's humid, air conditioner, or some type of uh, dehumidifier. So I don't have the AC on today. We'll see how they turn out. Usually I put the AC on. Um, so we can, we can um, answer that question after I put the next tray in. Uh, I feel like the AC helps so much, but I also had someone I was troubleshooting with the other day that said that they thought their theory was that the temperature change from the oven, from outside to the oven because they had the AC on made it so their macarons wrinkled on the top. I haven't tested that theory, so I'm not sure. But, I mean, everyone has different theories and could have um, – bad experiences with AC, but I love air conditioner. In my experience, it's been a good thing to have on while making macarons to dry them. I'm starting to smell them. So I'm excited. Uh, they're probably close to being done. I'm gonna check just because I don't wanna burn them. They look fine, um, so we'll see. I was a bit late to the streaming. I am not making white macarons today. I did like a marble look that um, I've seen on Jaslyn and the Sugar Beans YouTube pages. They kind of just plop in two different colors, swirl it in with a toothpick, and then you put it into your piping bag. Bailey, yeah, I bet you have your max dry in no time, right, when you're still piping. I feel like the first ones are probably dried already, huh? Let's see. I feel like I missed some things. You're able to do two baking trays, Elsa, or Edel, Elsa, I'm assuming. You got to try creme brulee macarons. I hear creme brulee is a really good mac. I could never sell them because... I would want to put some type of custard in them. And because of the egg yolk filling, I would never be able to sell them. But they look fantastic. Aw. Uh, Trang, I'm so excited that you feel the French method with this method was easy because um, it's just one less step. So it's a little bit faster. There is hollows in my macarons. Um, so someone said they always have hollows. Have you tried parchment paper? 
or increasing your temperature with silicone mats. Yeah, I was thinking too, since I don't have a convection oven that I should still flip. Um, someone had mentioned that she probably doesn't have to flip because she has a great airflow. So hopefully we didn't ruin it. It tastes really good. Kirsten, let's see, I missed what you said before that. Sorry guys, my kids. Yay, Jade, yes, join us for our weekly lives. We've made marshmallows and macarons, uh, fillings. Someone's, I've gotten asked so many times about pistachio mac, so I think my next video will be on that. Okay, let's do our oven shower. But um, I just need to get started. Alexa, stop. But the feet burst open and they, um, someone did the Italian Max. Let me, I think she turns off the oven. I guess you guys have said this, but there's so much to read. They only turn out nice at 275. Funny video fans, um, you, your oven just might run a little hot. 275 is great too. Um, whatever works for you, temperature is so different for each oven. Okay guys, so I'm opening the oven, turning off the oven and then letting them sit for two days. I mean, two minutes. Um, so letting them sit two minutes. Yes, ah, thank you. You told Alexa to stop like telling me. <laughs> I get in, sometimes I just get real frustrated with Alexa. So I'm not kind to her all the time. But they are getting all getting they aren't getting any feet. Um, someone said they're making max and they're not getting any feet. Um, I would say <laughs> yes. There are multiple things you could do. You might need to increase the strength of your meringue, make it more stiff. Just so you guys know, this I'm opening it manually, so I'm not forgetting to open. The oven is open. I'm just holding it. Um, Three minutes, Tina says. Okay. Um, so not having feet could be a result of not having a stiff enough meringue. You could not be you could be under mixing your batter or your temperature could be too low. Those are a few things that could happen. Um, what kind of probe thermometer? I just use my the same one, this bad boy, Thermapen. It's from Thermaworks. Um, I feel it is consistent and I enjoy it. I would love all my probe thermometers have broken, um, throughout the years. So that one doesn't break it. And I can always depend on that. Nothing worse than your probe not working and you're right at temp. Okay, guys, I'm getting impatient. I'm keeping it in. Yeah, Bailey, they have really nice, especially if um, you're into barbecuing, they have really nice things for temperature wise, keeping that meat, I don't know, cooked <laughs> at the right temperature. Okay, my Teflon tend to move. Yeah, Cheryl, do you have a convection oven? Maybe is the wind blowing it? I mean, the fan blowing it? Uh, what was the temp of the sugar syrup? Oh, you're probably asking someone above. I take my sugar syrup to 118 Celsius. Okay. I think you guys are talking to one another. We are going to take these bad boys out. You ready? Did I put them? I have them. The computer's on them. Okay. All right. Listos? Here we go, macarons. I am going to turn my oven back on and just bake these like I would normally since they're probably dried already. Or I could be brave and put them both in and try to do the, 
do the method again that she uses to dry. Okay, let me see. Let's check these out. Let's see if they're hollow. So I'm gonna move this over because this gets really, really hot. So let's cool this down quickly. If you're adding freeze dried fruits into your shell, um, I highly recommend doing a little bit. It does get a chewier texture from the freeze dried fruits and it kind of changes, they're delicious, but it definitely changes the texture. So if you go too far, it tastes almost tacky on your teeth. Um, I don't have a specific ratio, but I would only use about 15 grams of um, freeze dried fruits when I was doing my larger batches. So that was to 125 grams of egg whites. So kind of gauge that. Sugar beans. We'll see. Let's crack one open. I love how she like makes the camera focus on it. Let's see. So voila. I don't know how she cracks it, but does she go up or down? Nope. Not as full. They've got some they've got some holes. <laughs> Let's just squish them down like this, guys. There, it's a little better. <laughs> There's definitely some hollow. Oh, I see a sad face. Yep, but not as good as her. I'd sell these, though. They taste good. I like her recipe ratios. Okay, I'm going to put the, let me check the other oven. Oh, there's so much crying. I can tell you guys really um, value a full shell. I don't mind a little bit of a, um, a gap in between. But I am quite sad that even on my Teflon that I had that. So hopefully the silicone mat isn't worse. They would still taste really good. You push the bottoms in when you fill them, no one will be able to tell. They are delicious as I drop. The things are just for me. Okay, I'm gonna see if the other one's dried. You can say my name, it's Nick Gur. I'm confused. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. They are not dry. So I'm going to turn the oven down and see if I can do the same thing with those, even after they sat. So let me turn my oven down. 245 since I can't get to 248. What temperature do I, I just bake them at three, uh, around 290. Did it need more time? Um, more time? You mean like, let me open this. You mean more time in the oven? I don't think so, but possibly. If I break it this way, let's see if it looks better. No, it doesn't look, it doesn't look better. Broke it really strange. Hers are so beautiful. Do this method by drying it normally. Yeah. Let's try it with the last tray. We'll just dry it normally. We won't even do the increase in temperature. With this tray, we can see if while they wait, they still work. If you low, you keep it low first to dry and then increase. And then with the last tray, we'll just put it straight in. 
excuse me. I don't know if you guys want to stick around for three trays though. So let me gauge that. Cause usually I only bake one tray off. I, that's why I do little batches. All in all, they turn out pretty, but um, they're not completely full. They didn't crack. I was really expecting them to crack. They have a nice smooth top. She she advertises you get a nice smooth top with Swiss with Swiss method, and it is nice and shiny. Um, the marbling is pretty cool. I like her technique. And then the feet are fine. It's just um, not as not as full. Turn off the heat. I preheat my gas oven to 250, put tray in and turn off the heat completely. Like you don't turn on the, does someone not turn on the oven at all when they are baking their macarons? Super behind in your guys' chat. Sorry. I would do this method, but uh, her ratio, actually, she has a lot of almond flour to confectioner sugar. And that I think would also helps them not crack when you're drying out in the oven. Um, so I don't find it too sweet, the recipe. So, will I ever switch to Swiss, Swiss method? I don't know. These are really pretty. Let's see how these second tray works out. This, it's not really, it's too hot in temperature, but I'm not one to be patient. Two minutes of open door and it's at like two, 270. We'll see if it works this way. And then we will, mine cracked when they were baking. Hmm. Live in the dream. Uh, you did this recipe, right? It definitely could have been over mixed. Just took out the trays lopsided with high feet with my recipe, not, not sugar beans recipe. Diana, you did um, French meringue method. You can definitely do marble. Yeah, you can do the marble effect with French meringue. Um, you could do it even with Italian, definitely versatile. Live in the dream. Okay. So you might have overmixed. Was your batter pretty runny? Was I supposed to turn off the oven when I put it in? Now I forget. Now I forget what I'm doing. Can you... I turned on the oven and I think I kept the oven on the entire time. Now I forget what I did. Let's see. Two to three minutes. Yeah, I keep the oven on really low when they're in and then you turn it off, close the oven and then turn it on to your normal temperature that you bake your meringues, your ma macarons. Okay, so there's that. I'm closing the oven, turning it up to temp. All right, guys. I feel like one tray, well, I don't know. I don't want this to be really long on here. I know some of you guys have to go. I am behind on your questions. Um, I'm going to flip again, I think. What type of oven do you use? This is a Frigidaire gas oven. Not convection. Yes, it's gas.
Hopefully I can get a better picture when the lighting's better to show you guys how pretty this these look. But I think I will just post some pictures of how the last two trays go because it could take 20 more minutes, potentially longer, if I'm doing math correctly, um, to bake off both of these trays. So I will just let you guys know how they turn out. Um, let's see, turn brown instead of marble color. Oh, did, did you do, so you took out your max and they turned brown after you took them out? Oh, I'm sorry, Mikhail, you don't, you don't cry. I have a lopsided max too, so you know, like it happens. And if you did the whole mixing in the mixer, it's definitely going to be your um, source of trouble probably because if you don't mix it a little bit and make sure that the batter is evenly mixed or you didn't get on that bottom of the bowl it could definitely have lot you could get lopsided macarons from the batter not being evenly distributed and mixed or your oven temp could be too high you could have too many macarons piped on one tray some ovens you have to only pipe a few rows on your on your silk pad or your baking sheet because as they bake off, they produce steam. You're reducing the moisture inside your product and that could cause cracking if your oven doesn't circulate the air well enough or it could cause lopsided max. So you could try giving more space in between each piped macaron shell and see if you get more even feet that way. One. The last tray turns out. All right, I, I can be here. I have to bake them off anyways. What filling will they be? I haven't decided for the filling. I made some chocolate ganache, which is probably way too hot now, but I made chocolate ganache and I was thinking I would do that, but I think with the coloring, something a, a different color might look better. Maybe like a pink just to bring a fun little splash of color to the shells. I usually like to match up shells and color, the color of shells and the flavor. But since I'm not doing a regular menu anymore, I don't feel as compelled to do so. I feel like it won't be, I'm not confusing anyone by having a blue shell and a pink filling. It's just more fun instead of functional, which when you have a menu, you kind of want to be functional so people aren't confused what they're getting. I do use white food coloring. Let me get it and I can show you. Try baking double tray if you have lopsided macarons. Interesting. So putting more trays in may help you have more um, even, even feet macarons. So some of these ones are cracking on the sides in my hot spots in my oven. So we'll see how these turn out. Someone asked about white coloring. I like Chef Rubber. It's color for macarons. And it's titanium dioxide, mostly. So there are things that you can get just titanium dioxide on Amazon for a lot cheaper than Chef Rubber. But for some reason, I have better luck with straight up Chef Rubber and not titanium dioxide. Whew, it's so hot. Do you add in more white to compensate for the moisture loss while heating over double? More whites. Uh, I just went with sugar beans recipe. So if you're using French method, I wouldn't think you'd have to compensate for moisture lost. I think it would only be a good thing with macarons, but we'll see. Let's flip this. Uh, let's see if I can get you guys at a good angle so you can see the cracking. The lighting's gonna be bad. 
but I've got even some lopsided ones. So I don't want to keep the oven open too long. But these ones are not as nice after resting. Some of them are cracked, some of them are lopsided. Setting the timer for 10 minutes. Um, I feel like with my oven right now, I'm still learning it, but if I overload a tray like that one, I tend to get lopsided macarons. So I have been doing less on a tray. I was hoping I could bake everything off on that one though and not have a third tray. So I tried, but it did not do well. How hot is your oven? It's at 290 right now, Fahrenheit. Like a dummy, I've tried many times, but my macarons still get hollow. Oh, my mouth. My macarons still have hollows too. It's, if it's like a super dry day and I do the macaronage at just the right point, I'll have super full shells, but that doesn't happen very often. It's, there's usually a little gap in between the meat of the cookie and the shell, and I don't stress about it. Uh, these cookies are too finicky to worry too much about that when you're cooking in a home oven. Having a relaxed hand. One's pressing the batter against the bowl. Yeah, Peter, I didn't see sugar bean pressing the batter so much, but I have seen more videos of people using their hand mixer, um, using the Swiss method, and doing such a, um, what's the word, a methodical pressing out of the batter, and it takes too much. It takes a lot of time. It's like an art that if you are producing a ton, it's hard to make sure you do um, perfectly each time. Yeah, Peter, it really does make a strong meringue. Um, the Swiss method definitely is an improvement over the French method if, if, if you're struggling with meringue issues. However, French meringue does work really well. You just have to get it down. It's really a preference that everyone has to make for themselves. Um, to learn nothing better, math. I wish I could read that. To entiendo nada más. This is hollow. What causes hollow macarons? So many. You can go watch my troubleshooting video. It has a lot about what could cause hollows and how you could fix it. Does the Swiss method produce heavy condensation? I don't know. I'll have to see. This is only my second time doing it. Do you have a how to make macarons video. Yes, I do. This is French method, which is my preferred method. And it's macaron 101. Um, it usually pops up as the first one on my channel for most popular. And it is very in depth. It's like 35 minutes. So you could even put it on while you're making macarons. But it is um, very, I guess, in depth is the best word I can put. So if you're having troubles with it and you prefer French method, I recommend checking out the Macaron 101. Fashionably late. Hi, Christina. We are, we just did Swiss method. They turned out pretty, at least the first tray. The second tray we're having issues with. So 
We'll see. Not as full as we'd like. Hi, Gail. Again, I, I never know if people stick around because it's so long. Will you be offering your macarons for sale in the new state? May, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm migrating over. People have asked for more classes. So migrating to online courses and doing that while I'm here in Oregon for two years. Exactly, Zoe. Personal preference, whatever you feel most comfortable with, do that because it's all about how you're feeling when you're making these. If you let the cookie get to your head, it causes so much frustration and I feel like it makes you overthink and ruin your batter. I love Oregon so far. It has been so awesome to be here. I wish it was cooler. Uh, it's been so hot, but all in all, it... I love being close to the river, being able to go um, do outdoorsy things really easily. It's fun. Listing, folding laundry. <laughs> Thanks, Jade, for staying, staying in the group chat. Oh, you can disappear for like 15 more minutes, Cheryl, before our third tray is going to be out. So phone just died. Had to switch to the iPad. These things go so long. I am so flustered with my phone. I was asking earlier if anyone knew, like if I call anyone, they cannot hear me. I can hear them, but my microphone doesn't work or something. So if anyone has insight into how to fix that for an Apple, let me know, but I think I need to call them. Do you free shells unfilled? I do. I will free shells unfilled and filled. Um, I really, I can't stress enough. I know it sounds like they're not fresh when you freeze them, but using the freezer, especially when you start doing large production for your own business is really key. Macarons are a beautiful cookie in the sense that they freeze wonderfully. They keep their shelf life well when you freeze them, depending on the filling you use. Um, but for the most part, they are wonderful to keep unfilled or filled and have them on hand for a party or um, custom orders. Apple store. I need to go to the Apple store, Susan. Not what I'm looking forward to. I found your live stream while researching on YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, so also someone asked, so the last episode or last live, I did the red velvet macarons. I feel like when you add chocolate to your, your cocoa powder, to your macarons, they are something about it makes them more full. I, I have better luck having really full macarons with cocoa powder. So if you're looking to kind of play around and you don't mind some chocolate shells, do that red velvet recipe I have posted on the previous live. Can you make a video on how to store fillings like ganache? Yeah, yes, I, I feel like it can be kind of compiled with how to produce the right amount of filling as well for how much macarons you're making. People have asked for more detailed information on production all in all. So I could fit that into there. So if you're freezing, with jellies or jams. I've had great luck when I cook my jams down more than you're supposed to. So I've been taught to cook my jam to 106 Celsius when I'm cooking a jam, is at least um, a, a berry jam. You cook strawberry a little bit further, but anyways, I cook it further, which reduces moisture, and then your macaron shelf life increases. And um, I've noticed they store really well in the freezer. If I use a store-bought jam, it does not freeze well and it is gonzo in like a week. So you kind of have to play around, um, cook, cook your jams down more than usual to reduce moisture. It's kind of like a, you have to play around with flavor because if you cook too much, you take out that bright, delicious, uh, fruit flavor. So you kind of have to play around and find a sweet spot that still sings the flavors of whatever fruit you're using 
but also reduces that moisture enough. So low and slow cooking sometimes helps with that, keeping that flavor. Um, by creating a voice memo and see if your voice gets recorded. Yeah, so like I can talk to Siri. She will say, hey Siri, what's the time? It's 2.37 p.m. She can tell me the time. But if somebody calls me, then they can't hear me. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm gonna sell once COVID is over. I'm really struggling right now with homeschooling, just thinking about homeschooling both kids and keeping up with production. So we'll see. I think I didn't, no, I, I did. I was thinking I didn't um, flip these, but I already did. I'm gonna just take them out. I don't have the patience for the oven shower. Since they're not pretty anyways. I mean, there's a few that are, but there's these cracked ones over here and some lopsided ones. And like I said, I'm still getting used to my oven. So this might not be, this might not be because of the resting. It might just be because I had less on this tray. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, some look gorgeous on this tray still. Oh, thank you, Lori. Wow, you guys are so generous. Thank you so much. Um, oh. You're gonna make me cry. Um, so take it with a grain of salt when you do this on your own. It might not, your second tray might not crack or do what mine has done. Um, it might just be my oven. So no oven shower for you. <laughs> no oven shower. I will take a very nice cool shower after this. Here, I'm gonna put that last tray in just straight at 290 sans um oven bath no i'm just joking uh the drying process and we shall see her method straight from sugar beans method of putting them straight in after piping and drying them out and then baking worked really great resting them possibly might have not worked as well but we don't know because of the variable of how many are piped on my tray and then this third tray we shall see All right, guys, last tray. These are dry, so let's put them in. I'm gonna do seven and seven minutes, like my normal bake. Sometimes it's eight and eight, but my oven's running a little hot because I've had macarons in there for the span of 45 minutes, so. I reduce the heat of my oven, but hopefully that will keep my oven temperature still around 290. That's the sweet spot in this oven for me. It might be different for your oven. Hello from Saudi. My French methods, but dry faster. So drying your, you could try this drying method that sugar bean uses. Um, it works with the Swiss method. However, her ratio of almond flour to confectioner sugar was higher. So I have heard that when you have a higher ratio with almond flour, it does help you not need to rest your, your macarons. So you might have to tweak your recipe a little bit with French method and increase almond flour, but these macarons turned out really great. They were dried in the oven. Um, they didn't have to be dried out at room temperature. And that could be a really good thing for people who live in humid environments. So this is pretty cool. If that works even for French, I'll have to test it out and let you guys know. Or we might have to change, go cook your dinner, Gail, um, our recipe a little bit. Um, have you ever tried macarons? Sprugly? Nope, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. I have not tried them. Is that a, brand, a certain type of bakery? Sliding. Oh, Cheryl, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see, Cheryl, what you said, if you do have a convection oven or not. 
So you even put some batter down and kind of smushed it down and your Teflon still slides. Enjoy your dinner, Gail. I think I already said that, but I just want to emphasize. Thanks so much for joining. I'm going to vent my oven for a second just to make sure the temperature isn't too hot in there after baking the two other trays. It's around 310, so hopefully it doesn't go any higher. I'll keep looking. It's dry in Oma uh, as well, and I only dry mine for 15 minutes. That's nice. So they dry really fast. Let's check out the fullness of this second tray. Oops, I crushed it. I forgot to check if it was even done, guys. That's how. It's it's the same. Um, it, I crushed it by accident, so it, it makes it almost look like it's full, but it's not. It, it would have the same amount of gap as the, Swiss, as the first tray. Not a complete fail. I'll have to, next time I'm overseas, I'll have to try that. I've never seen their macarons around here. When I worked in Alsace, it was only local places. I feel like they didn't have a lot of, like, I feel like in America, they're chains and you can get them everywhere, you know, but in Alsace, it was all such local little bakeries. And I don't think there was anything close to that. I did go to a German bakery. I'm not, but definitely not this one. I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. May, I used to get Easy Eggs at Restaurant Depot. It has a whipping agent. Some people have told me they have had success without the whipping agent, but I have not. It clearly says you cannot use for whipping meringues on some cartons. Just read the carton. Oh, you, you don't live in the U.S.? Okay. How many minutes did you bake these macarons today? So I had them in the oven at a lower temperature for two minutes, and then I increased for 15 minutes at around 300 degrees, 290, 300 Fahrenheit. But I try not to crush it so much. See, there's still that gap. Yeah, fillings, I feel like fillings is the number one thing people want, and I get it. It makes your macaron what it is. You know, your filling is flavors your shell. All shells taste very similar, but it's that unique punch that you can add that flavor to. And I would love to do some more. Some people want the Earl Grey recipe uh, from a Swiss meringue method, which is a, such a good, such a good filling. Um, and then pistachio. Those are the two on my list right now. Let me know if you guys have more. Do you use aged egg whites? For Ava, for this, I did. I aged my egg whites only for one night, though. So I don't know how much it helped. Also, you're heating up your sugar syrup. So starting at room temperature makes you have to um, whisk on the double boiler for less time. So I like to have room temperature eggs when I'm doing Swiss method the two times I've done it. Because it's just less whisking. You get up to temperature quick and you can move on and not worry about scrambling your egg whites. Sounds like a lot, an ice cube in the, oh, I missed the ice cube part. Have you tried making macarons? No, I want to try aquafaba. I want to try vegan macarons, but I have not. Um, I watched Pies and Tacos. Her, she has a YouTube channel and a great presence on Instagram. Her, her pictures are gorgeous. So I think it's Camilla. Now I'm questioning myself. But uh, she has a YouTube video that I wanted to check out and just see what it entails. So now I really want to see if it's Camilla. Pistachio, please. Savory. The savory got me. Um, yeah, Camilla. 
um, savory macarons we did once and it was like a roast roast beef inside of it and it was just with this sweet shell I didn't reduce the sugar it just threw me for a loop I didn't know if I loved it or not but I kept eating it yes Cheryl pistachio paste is the secret to a really good pistachio uh, macaron use pistachio paste in your filling and a homemade one sounds delicious all right guys this third tray looks nice um looks way better it could be that there's way less piped on there too as i was saying my oven doesn't tend to like a lot baked at once because i get these these beautiful, beautiful creatures. Um, not pretty, not pretty at all. I think I said I would do seven and seven. And I'll check on it and then we'll see. Personally, I would not dry macarons. Definitely depends on your environment for how long things are dried. Pistachio is my favorite too, Cheryl. It's so classic. I feel like you hate it or you love it. But I even like, this is my guilty pleasure, pistachio pudding. Like just the, the mix that you mix up. I don't know the brand. But you just put milk in and mix it and then it sets. So freaking good. Fake pistachio flavor, but I love it. Do's and don'ts for fillings. Ooh, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Do's and don'ts for fillings. Pistachio, do's and don'ts. I don't have a pen, so I'm just going to pretend. I never use my phone for notes, but maybe I should. Oh, my mama. Thank you. Do's and don'ts. I like that. Trying to get more short videos out for you guys because these ones are so long. So I feel like people need a little bit of a concise short video. They can learn something and move on with their life instead of sitting here with me for hours, which I enjoy, but I'd rather be able to see your faces. So it's kind of strange having it one sided and I'm such a slow reader, but we're having fun still. Still taste great. They do taste great still, Christina. You're right. Speaking of, I didn't have lunch. No short videos, Dora says. Don't eat all at once. <laughs> I, I like a, a concise video. Not super short, but something that will allow you guys to not spend your afternoon with me. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. Is it on Andrea? Thank you so much. Thank you, Zoe. Yeah, I feel like we had success with our first our first tray. We did it just like Sugar Bean does, and it was successful. It was not as full as she has. But that's just being real. They weren't they weren't completely hollow, but there were a lot of people crying on here. <laughs> so I feel like they might cry when they see that result if they were to do it. But I'm like, hey, it looks good on the outside. It's mostly full. Let's do this. So it really depends on what your priorities are and what you um, put the emphasis on when you're making Max. But mine is not a completely full macaron, which I know is completely um, different from the non-hollow movement that macarons have. But in pastry school, I tell you, we were never once, we never once talked about hollow macarons. I have nothing in my notes about worrying about how full they are. 
Um, obviously you don't want them brittle and have nothing in the middle, but it wasn't, it wasn't a big emphasis on making sure your macarons are full. No, I won't stop doing lives. I enjoy them too. Um, <laughs> well, I'm very happy that you guys enjoy spending three hours of your life with me. I enjoy it too. Like I said, it's a little one-sided, so I get sick of seeing myself on the screen. Is it crunchy on the outside, Dora asks. Yes, it does. It is. You can hear it. Can you hear that crunch? I don't know how good the the uh, laptop is with with the um, sound. No, I'm happy to ans answer questions. Might as well, right? It's almost 6 a.m. now. Oh my gosh. What time did it start when we started this live? You're up early. We want both. You got it. Want both live and short videos. Yeah, okay, you heard the crunch, good. I'm so sweaty. My oven puts off so much heat. Okay, dance, dance. I feel like we need to all get up and take a breather and dance. One time I put on the music and then I realized copyright issues, so can't turn on music. <laughs> Kathleen, did you try the Swiss method? Let me know how it went. Uh, hopefully I can get my phone working because all morning I was, my mother can attest trying to get my GoPro to work or my phone to work and nothing was working. So I do apologize for being a little bit flustered today, especially in the beginning, having to switch links yet again. You get too many bubbles in your batter, John. I think I mix egg whites at a higher speed. Yeah, that could definitely be it. Um, if you were to slowly work your way up while you make your meringue, it not only strengthens your meringue, but um, it will, well, it'll strengthen your meringue and then make sure you knock out enough air. If you have too much air at the end, you're gonna get those air bubbles. I get air bubbles a lot too. Um, but it doesn't tend to bother me. If they're causing cracking or something, if you have that much air, then yeah, just beat slower for your meringue and make to make a nice strong meringue and take out more air when you're mixing your batter or macronaging. Only crunchy. I love when you dance. <laughs> Happy dancing is my favorite. I feel like we can all kind of feel like a little joy of moving your body when you get something down. You would have seen a happy dance if these were as full as sugar beans, but I'm not, I'm not mad at it either. Dance, dance, dance. I like air bubbles too inside my macarons. Uh, on top, not as exciting. Sometimes it bothers me and yet I still don't pop them. Thanks so much, Bailey, for joining. I tried the Swiss method, but got small feet. Huh, let me see. Did you get to a completely stiff peak with your macarons? I'm gonna do this oven shower thing again, because I only baked for 14 minutes, but they feel like they are done. So I feel like the Swiss method is also baking faster. Um, so I'm gonna leave it on for three more minutes to not brown, but to continue to cook as she does, as Sugar Bean does on her video. I'm trying to get her name out as much as possible. You guys should go check it out. It's quite incredible that the shells are so full so if the, the stiff peaks were, hmm, no feet, did you, so they're not rested. So maybe your oven didn't do well with drying them out um, if you didn't produce feet. 
I get dislikes a lot. That's okay. Everyone has their own method they prefer to learn from and or people that they don't mesh with with their personalities. I, I'm not worried about it. Hey, Ina. Dora, you just need a follower. Aw. Let's see. Thanks for liking. Oops. Oh, Dora, of course. Your Animal Crossing Max were awesome. And I love all the shapes you do and the experiments. It just is so fun to watch. Super sweet. I find Italian macarons, Pamela said, they find them sweeter. I find them a bit sweeter as well. Um, I tend to feel the sweetness a little more on Italian right here. Um, as I eat, but it can definitely be paired with a less sweet, sweet filling and all in all. I feel like it tastes very similar to French, but there is a distinct difference. And um, my personal opinion is I prefer French and that's why I make it, but I don't dislike Italian. Uh, I think I'm doing stick to your recipe. Yeah, Indulge with Mimi has such a great base recipe and then just tweak it for your environment. And um, just that you can't beat that batter is so similar to an Italian meringue method that it works well. Uh, I also liked and used Brave Tarts recipe, um, Stella Parks for so long. I just switched to Mimi's base recipe uh, last June. And um, Stella Parks has a lot more confectioner sugar to almond flour. But I feel like um, I really had, I liked her flavor better than Mimi's better, which is interesting because it has more confectioner sugar, but it has a lot less sugar in your meringue. So I had to get used to the taste of um, the base recipe of Mimi's after I switched because I was so used to my other one. So it really just depends on preference. Okay, okay, let's see. I have to try in both preferences. So I'm a creature of habit, and I don't think I will switch to Swiss, but I am interested in trying again without the camera just to see if I can get fuller shells just to play, play the game. But um, it's just another step that I don't feel necessary. I have... Um, I'm going to take these max out. Okay, guys. Here's the last tray. There's only a few on here, so the air flows better, and I feel like that's where um, I went wrong on the second tray. I piped too many on my sheet pan for my oven. Your oven could possibly take a full sheet tray. My old oven could, which was, I feel like way worse than this one. So I gotta play around with how I can, maybe I need to vent my oven in the beginning. But yeah, let me show you guys. They all had about the same level of gap. So that wasn't an issue from sitting longer. The top of my, sometimes with my French method, the third tray can get a little bit fragile tops. Um, if I'm not doing my me the method where you do uh, multiple trays in your oven at once, which I haven't tried in here, my third tray would always get a little bit brittle. So that is something that could actually change my mind into using French method is if you're doing a lot of batches they don't seem, the batter doesn't seem to be affected by resting too long, which is a big plus for me. Um, with Italian method, if I rested too long, they were all lopsided. And that's why I preferred French too. I had more time to do things. But this might be the longest you can rest. I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe I'm drying my almond flour. Oh, I missed what people are saying. 
please try. So this is the second batch, some of the, the better shells. There's a lot of good shells, but so that's the second batch. Here's the first. With my French steel pan, you get bigger feet because it conducts heat well. So um, the heat makes it rise faster and you get a better shell, a better foot. So this is a regular aluminum sheet pan. This is the French steel. If you guys can see that. And then the third tray, let me get some off. This bad boy. Guys, I might have to switch. I don't know. This is the third tray. I've got um, blisters on my hands because I went golfing for the first time, so sorry. Um, golf clubs got me. I like these feet. Um, looks very similar. So this one is the first batch and the third batch. So there we go. What a difference. Uh, I love that you guys are making friends. We're going to be a big Mac fam macaron family. Okay. You are so welcome, Dora. Thank you for joining. You guys are amazing. Um, I've tried that, still had wrinkle tops. Okay, so I think I missed a few. Let me take a second. If you guys wanna leave, thank you for joining. I'm gonna take a second and just scan questions that I've missed really quickly that just recently, I feel like there are a few maybe I can help with. And then I will say goodbye, Mac family. I love it. I love that. Thank you guys. Let me see. Um, someone asked if I've tried Italian method meringue for um, filling. Like, a, is are you talking about Italian buttercream? Excuse me. Because if so, I I love Italian buttercream. It works really well. It's not too it's not too soupy. Um, if it's soupy, you might be not heating the syrup up enough. So Zoe said something about the wrinkled tops. And yes, I've had wrinkled tops usually with cocoa powder in the, in the macarons because it reduces the It'll, uh, having cocoa powder in your batter, it's for some reason, I feel like because it's less dense than what you're replacing the ingredients with in the re original recipe, it causes you to overmix faster. So if you're not careful, um, you can just decrease the strength of your batter if you overmix and then you get wrinkled tops. Or if you have too low of oven temperature, you can get wrinkled tops. Or if you rest too long with certain recipes, you can have wrinkled tops. Did I also say if your oven temperature is too low? I think I did. Um, Annette asked what the oven shower is. So on Sugar Beans channel, she does a oven shower. I almost said bath. An oven shower is where you, I think, turn off the oven and vent your oven, like hold it open. She has these little mitts that I just use my hand to hold it open because I was standing here anyways. But like you could do a wooden spoon if you and try to open it up enough. Either way, turning your oven off after it's baked and letting them sit for three minutes or so to fully bake without browning. That's what I was told in this chat by our wonderful Mac fam. We had to leave the party. Oh, Ava, I'm so sorry you had troubles every time you did the Swiss method. I hope it helps. 
I think the main thing is making sure you don't go too hot on your sugar syrup or your egg whites and sugar. Uh, you don't want to scramble those eggs. You don't want the actual water in your saucepan to touch your, your mixer. So that direct contact of water and your mixer bowl is not good. You just want the steam to be heating up your bowl and slowly bringing your eggs to temp to 50 Celsius or one something Fahrenheit. I don't want to ask Alexa again. Um, I might have put it here. 122 Fahrenheit. Um, what else about the Swiss method that could go wrong? Again, you have to play with your oven because sugar bean, like we've said before, has a commercial oven, commercial grade oven, convection. She can do multiple trays at once. And um, her environment is a little bit more um, stable, I guess you could say. So just knowing that things could change in your home environment and making sure you be aware of that. 2015, I got so traumatized. Oh my goodness. Five years. What traumatized you so much that you wouldn't do it again for five years? Did you do Italian method and burn yourself or something? I feel like that would make me not want to ever do it again. Dora, thank you so much. Honestly, I am happy to share the knowledge with you guys. I'm excited for the chance to um, do Zoom meetings and more online chats so we can see face to face and I can help more personally uh, or I can help and it will be more personalized to your senior method and figuring out how we can improve. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I feel like it takes longer too, Trang. But I also saw her make 1,600 macarons really quickly, but she had a whole setup of like three different mixers. And so one's doing a meringue, the other one's at the point where you're adding your dries in the meringue. And, you know, like just you have to be super organized to be able to do multiple batters at once. And you need to also know what you're doing and have it fully down with one before you add all those. But you could do this quickly, as if, especially if you don't have to wait for drying but I agree. It's another step that I don't want to do. However, I'm excited that the third tray didn't look awful. Yay, Yolanda, you learned to make Max during COVID. Something good out of it, right? I feel like it's been, oh, it's been two hours. Okay, I should go. But it's it's been a rough go for everyone. And it's nice to have things to look forward to. So this weekly uh, live, when I was able to do it. I know when I was moving, it wasn't frequent, but has really kept me going. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you for your donations. Um, really appreciate you and tuning in. Uh, you guys made my day, especially so much better because I miss my husband, but all right. We don't need to get gushy. Um, Dora, love you lots, everybody. Sorry if I missed your questions. Hopefully next time I can get to them. Best wishes, y'all. Thanks for joining in. Have a wonderful day. I'm too sweaty to like really dance, but we can all have a dance party and say goodbye. Out of order. Ugh. I'm sorry. Bye, guys. You might want to, Sylvia, you might want to crack your oven door if it's, if your macarons are all cracking. All right, guys, much love, everybody. Peace out.